Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today I'm giving the full garden tour of the front and backyard. And I'm doing this early in the morning because it has rained and it's cold outside and that means that the cicadas brood X that comes out every 17 years, that means that they're quiet right now oddly quiet it's kind of almost too quiet now for me because I'm so used to the noise so let's get outside and see what's going on with the garden well since it's raining let's start off with the most obvious thing which is my rain gauge let's see how much it rained since last night oh more than two inches about six centimeters <laughs> that's quite a bit of rain and it's still going the what was once going to be the tomato bed but is now our garlic and flower bed and we have here, this is the moringa plant um, that I grew using winter sowing, as well as cleome flowers. There we go, spider flowers. And look at this one in particular. That is about to bloom, very, very close. And it is closely watched by a silent cicada. <laughs> Next to it, the, the borage has spread out. I'd say it's probably taking up about two feet and it's looking really healthy. This was also a volunteer. Uh, I direct sowed those last year and they reseed easily. Here we have our, these were also winter sown. These are butterfly weed plants. I have a couple over there as well. So I've just been randomly uh, transplanting flowers <laughs> in this bed. These are going to be black eyed Susans. And I put rice holes around them so that you would have, uh, I would know not to pull them, that they weren't weeds. Because right now they're so small and they kind of look a little bit like broadleaf plantain uh, plants, which are a weed. And although they have a nutritious value, they're not something I would want in this bed. My red coxcomb flowers are coming along nicely. I really hope that the cold weather doesn't hurt some plants, you know, my peppers and tomatoes, because it's going to get down to the 40s at night. I know it won't kill them, but it might stunt their growth. There's not much I can do about that. I've, my bed's way too big to cover at night. Um, so the one benefit to the chilly weather is the garlic can handle it and the beets can handle it, and they're getting very close to harvest time. But before I get there, let's check out the pepper bed. I have planted up uh, my jalapeno peppers, uh, tossed some yarrow in here. I don't know if you could see, they're kind of flattened by the rain, but two baby bell peppers, and it looks like one got killed by the rain. Ugh. Well, that's bound to happen. That's a shame. Well, I guess I'll plant something else there. Um, I need to put the webbing up for it, but that's my Christmas lima beans over there. The eggplants. Um, this row is all uh, sweet banana peppers. And uh, I guess <laughs> the pansies, the ones that haven't been killed off by the heat entirely, will also enjoy this cool reprieve. So I'm not upset about that. I also planted up peppers here. I planted my... Uh, Jimmy Nardello pepper there. That's the mystery pepper I got from that um, seedling exchange. Uh, a couple of Jimmy Nardello peppers that I grew. And uh, the poinsettia pepper that's mostly decorative, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. I have yet to plant up a few more peppers. They're all kind of sitting over here, but I bought a fish pepper. Um, and then I also still need to plant up the spicy pepper and another eggplant and my sugar rush peach which I uncovered yesterday not knowing it'd be so cold today so guess what sugar rush, pe rush peach you're gonna get recovered today and tomorrow because it's chilly outside one thing I'm really excited to show you guys when I brought the lovage home uh, if you saw my seedling exchange it was very tall but it was also very wilty and it just wasn't doing well so i basically cut it off well let me set it here at the seat so you can see it better 
I basically cut it off at the stem here. I had seen there was a tiny, tiny shoot coming out from here. And I gambled that if I put it in soil and gave it water, that it would develop. And sure enough, it is coming out. And we have a couple of shoots. Now this one doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I think bugs ate that. We also have another shoot here that came out of the ground. So looks like the lovage has survived. And uh, once it's a little bit taller, I will transplant it to the garden. I still have to decide where I'm going to put it, but I'm just excited for the moment that it's doing so well. I harvested a few of the beets and I'm looking forward to harvesting more. Uh, they were delicious. I'll show you a photo of me holding them. But they haven't grown very big probably because they're all planted close together. And because it's cool, I'm definitely going to give them at least one more week to grow. And hopefully we'll get some really good beets out of it. There's the single seed eggplant, a single seed challenge eggplant. This is my Caserti zucchini, two of them. And then, um, I forgot what this is called. Um, this is a winter squash. I also planted up some egg, some uh, cucumber seeds last week, and we have sprouts. These are the straight eight cucumbers. And I have, for the moment, I have bridal tool on it. Uh, I, I will have to remove two of the plants and let one just go, but um, I have a story to tell about the bridal tool, which is that it's working. Two days ago, I came out to the garden and there was a squash bug sitting on the bridal tool outside the leaf. And I killed it. And the reason I think this works is basically the squash bug, what they like to do <laughs> is to get under the leaf and lay eggs, but he hadn't gotten under the knee leaf and there was no sign of eggs on top of the leaf. So I felt quite happy and successful that I had prevented at least one. And it tells me that so far uh, it's doing a pretty good job of keeping them out. Now it's no guarantee, but <clears throat> the longer I can keep squash bugs, the vine borers and the cucumber beetles off of these plants, the better chance they have of producing at least some fruit um, <clears throat> and I can self-pollinate all three of these. This, this plant in particular, the straight eight does not need more than one cucumber plant. Um, I can use the pollen from the same plant to, to, um, fertilize the, uh, the flowers. So I should be fine in that regard. There's the, there's the cabbage plants that I've also protected. I planted up my jalapeno pepper that I had overwintered into a big five gallon bucket and we have some fruit developing on it already from um, from inside we will see how they do in this cold weather uh, hopefully it can handle it I mean in the house it was normally around 65 degrees and it'll be in the 55 degrees out here um, but I think it'll be okay because the roots are pretty deep down it's got a pretty good root system. And look, everyone, how big the tomato plants have gotten <laughs> since the last time I filmed, which was about a week ago. This thing is probably at least two feet tall now. And it was, oh, about that, about the height of this leaf tall when I, when I planted it. They are really going gangbusters and I'm really excited. I really hope that you can see I've put some string in here to help uh, hold them up. I really hope this cold weather doesn't stunt them too much. I know as long as it doesn't freeze, we'll be fine. The flower section is doing wonderfully. It's too bad it is raining because my calendula are not open. You can see they're still flowering. And it looks like the Gallardia Indian blanket is getting very close to flowering. I have put up a couple of my 
garden um, mini decorations for garden fairies. And look at this. <laughs> my mom and I were at a plant store. And uh, oh my gosh, it has a heart on it. I didn't even realize that. This little gardening shack. <laughs> I think it's just about the cutest thing I've ever seen. Has a little work, to, work um, stand for potting things up. Has the doors, it has the windows, has the hat. Oh, I love it so much. I want a giant one, but for now, I'll be happy with that. I put my little <laughs> Halloween bridge between these two and I have my little witch on her books sitting there. Got this little wood looking bench, but it is plastic. Definitely plastic. And over here, we have a little Vietnamese lady with her, oh, I forgot, foo dogs, I think is what they're called. And a little hobbit style door behind. So we're mixing our back in the corner of the forest. We have our other Halloween doors. So a little bit of fun for the garden. <laughs> My first zinnia is starting to bloom. It's quite small right now, but it looks like it's going to be pink or white or mostly like a pale pink it's really really pretty these are from seeds i saved from last year which were mostly pink and white and i planted the fox foxglove uh plant that i got uh, from a seed exchange over here and i believe these are either dwarf asters or cosmos that I planted as seeds in these beds. We'll find out once I get bigger. <laughs> Probably the most successful of all. And I harvest a stock of these a day for my tea is the lemon balm. Look how much it is going gangbusters in the full sun. In the backyard, I have a pot and it looks very pale and not big. And um, you can tell how much better it does with full sun. Basil plants, uh, I planted up the lemon basil over there, the little ones, sweet basil, the large leaf basil. It's coming along nicely, as is the chocolate mint. And when I planted up the catnip, I thought, oh, I don't know if it'll do very good, but it is also going gangbusters. My bee bomb was all straight up, but now it has sort of been damaged by the rain, but hopefully it'll recover and get stand straight up once everything's done and it looks like my large marigolds are about to, to flower Ooh. look what i see everyone we have a ladybug we have a guest we have a ladybug in our garden Oh, that is a happy, happy sight for me. They eat aphids, they eat all kinds of pests. Another addition I made to the garden is this thing called dwarf curry. These leaves smell like curry and they can be put in, they're not proper curry leaves, but they can be put in garden in cooking. Um, and I'm definitely gonna try doing that. The coral coxcomb is starting to form a flower Ah, this is one of my favorite flowers in the garden, guys, and I am very much looking forward to seeing what it'll look like this year. The flower bed under the Japanese maple tree is doing well. My chamomile, my dwarf chamomile, as well as the alyssum. I've noticed for sure that this side of the bed gets more sun and everything is a little bit more lush than on that side, but that's okay. It's quite windy today. I moved my flamingo over here. The tomato plants are doing pretty good. I don't think they get quite as much sun as the ones in the containers. Um, I overestimated how much sun they'd get, not realizing how much this would bush out. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to cut the, leaf, the branches back on that a little to make sure I have more sun in this bed, but they're doing pretty good overall. The sunflower is here and I'm going to plant the rest of the yarrow in this bed here. Um, this one's growing the tallest. 
Looks like it's starting to form a flower. I don't know what you think. In the backyard, the sunflowers are doing relatively well. They did get a little beaten up by the rain. This one was bending over badly. And you can see that while it doesn't have the support structure to stay upright, the place where it got bent, it has built up a support system for itself. I'm still using the trash can to help hold it in place because, well, it's working. But at some point I'm gonna have to put a stake there and tie it to it so it can stay. Maybe I'll use one of those sticks over there. We have our first sign of red from our raspberries. And I think I'm going to, oh, we have another cicada. I need Mr. Cicada. I think I'll probably bring some bridal tool out this afternoon and just put it over it as an extra deterrent. Now there is, there's one of the holes that our resident groundhogs go in and out of this patch, probably to eat the strawberries that I never got to because the raspberry bush kind of took over as it, it did last year. Um, so I know that the groundhogs are probably going to get the berries near the bottom, but you know, that's a part of what happens when you grow things in nature. I'd say the happiest part of my garden in the backyard right now is my sugar snap peas. They did a very strange thing. I had them, they were, you know, taller than me, almost as tall as this fence. And I righted up the fence and they bent, I don't know what you can see here, they bent over, came down, and then grew back up. So basically they've done a U-turn and are now growing up here. And so we have this beautiful outlay of flowers growing all along it. And I already ate one this morning when I came out to look. We have our first sugar snap peas coming out. I think this is going to be a really good year for harvesting them. Another thing I want to show you is I have planted up green beans. These are all um, bush green beans. And I've just done these uh, six squares here. But they have sprouted. And I did about two seeds per hole. And yes, I'm going to have to trim, thin them down, but they're doing pretty well. Now the Swiss chard seems to be a favorite of the groundhogs who were getting in. It looks like they're still finding their way. Those boogers, they really want in here. They really want in. Also, I really... I don't eat them. I know they're edible. I don't actually like the taste of them that much. They're very horseradishy, but also kind of um, bitter. But I love the look of nasturtiums. And we have our first flowers sprouting. I saw one this morning. Where is she? There she is. Beautiful peach blossom for the nasturtiums. Now remember, these were volunteers. These are ones that came back from last year's seeds. There's a few more. I'd love to see some red ones. Last year we had some beautiful red ones. But I'm pretty happy seeing flowers at all because yay flowers. And speaking of flowers, I never did get around to fixing up this bed. But we have a volunteer flower. This is one I planted last year and it never went to flower that I knew of. Um, it is a uh, perennial plant and it is known as a... Um, Maltese cross flower and you'll notice the flowers are really quite small Compared to the whole plant, but I can imagine if next year Maybe I'll plant a whole bed of these and you'll have these beautiful pink flower beautiful red flowers um, Coming out and it seems that The reason I will do a whole bed of these is it seems the groundhogs do not like to eat them They have not eaten them. So that is a good sign that I will be able to eat me, have me a beautiful bed of these flowers. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so and make sure you have the bell button set so you get alerts when I post new content. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.